Hello everyone, this is Dwayne, aka Real Terror with Action Esports. I'm back today with another informational video to get you hyped for the upcoming beta launch. Today we're going to be focusing on hero cards. Heroes and Artifact are the most essential and powerful part of your deck. The 5 heroes you select to include in your deck are certain to make or break the game for you. I'm excited to share the finer details of Artifact's heroes with all of you in today's video, so let's get started. Heroes are the strongest cards you will see in Artifact, featuring high damage or health, as well as game swinging abilities. The heroes you pick are separated into four colors, known as houses, red, green, blue, and black. We will dive deeper into each house later on in the video, so be sure to watch until the very end. Much like creeps, heroes have attack, armor, and health stat lines. These stats show how much damage the unit can deal and sustain. If you want to know more about these stats, you can check out our video on damage, which is linked in the video description below. Unlike creeps, heroes do not have mana costs and are summoned differently. They will automatically respawn after two rounds when defeated, and can then be placed in the lane of your choosing. Some heroes will also have a passive or active ability, denoted by the box just above their attack value. Some of the abilities range from drawing extra cards to taking control of enemy creeps. They can have a significant impact on board states, so it's important to use them efficiently and to your advantage. When constructing your deck, you may choose heroes from multiple houses. You will then pick subsequent cards using the same colors that you chose with your heroes. Three copies of a hero's signature card are automatically included in your deck. They cannot be added manually or have their quantities reduced in any way. Since each house represents a different playstyle, utilizing heroes of various colors may give your deck the versatility it needs to get that all-important W. Further, using a variety of tactics could easily leave your opponent constantly guessing and push them into a costly misplay. Additionally, during the deck building phase, you will also pick the first three heroes that fight for you. However, keep in mind that you have no control over which lane they will spawn in. The fourth and fifth heroes will arrive valiantly in subsequent rounds, and this time you do get to select in which lane they will do battle. Once the game starts, you will only be able to cast cards of the same color as the hero you control in any given lane. For example, if you have a red hero, you will only be able to use red cards in that lane until a hero of a different color is deployed. Clearly, it's critical to keep your heroes alive. Otherwise, you'll be locked out of any lane without a hero until one is redeployed. Now, let's go into a bit more detail about each class and give you a glimpse into some of the cards and heroes that you'll be able to use from each color. First, let's look at Red, known as House of the Bold, and demonstrated by their tough and aggressive heroes, designed for an early offensive. One of the notable heroes in this class is Ursa. With 7 attack, Ursa will be excellent at taking down enemy creeps early, giving you direct access to their tower. Ursa's 10 health ensures it stays on the board and remains a constant threat to the enemy. You should also notice that Ursa has a passive ability called Fury Swipes. Whenever Ursa deals battle damage to a target, that unit is modified with minus one armor. This ability will help Ursa take down enemies with high health and armor since attacks will progressively do more damage. Ursa's signature card is Enrage, a four mana card which gives a red hero plus four attack and plus four armor this round. If you use this spell on a red hero such as Tidehunter, it can potentially take down a stronger enemy while also being able to absorb more incoming damage with the armor buff. The next color we will cover is green, also known as House of the Dreamer. This class features support heroes that help restore and empower other combat characters. One hero to remember is Treant Protector. With 4 attack and no armor, it is by no means a strong card stat-wise. Its real power lies in its passive. Known as Branches of Iron, this continuous effect provides allied neighbors with plus two armor as long as Triant Protector is present on the board. This extremely powerful passive effect will allow you to make favorable trades against enemy units as you will be taking far less damage. Triant Protector's signature card is Roseleaf Druid, which is a two attack, six health unit that costs four mana to play. When played, Roseleaf Druid will give your tower plus one mana, allowing you to play more cards than you normally could in future turns. Next, let's go over the black class, 
also known as the House of the Cunning. This is evidenced by the assassin-like heroes that focus on defeating other units to collect gold and using that advantage gained through the shop to snowball a lead to victory. A powerful hero from this class is Bounty Hunter with 7 attack and 7 health. Bounty Hunter's stats are nothing to scoff at because they can be further buffed by its passive ability, Janata, which has a 50% chance of providing Bounty Hunter plus 4 attack for the round. This means that the hero could have up to 11 attack each round, making it a formidable foe on offense. Bounty Hunter's signature card is Track, a 3 mana spell that gives a hero plus 10 bounty until it dies. The bounty gives the player who kills off the hero 10 additional gold, and since this spell can be used on enemy heroes, claiming this bounty can allow you to purchase more expensive items during the shopping phase. Pair this with the potential 11 attack from Bounty Hunter, and it's no wonder that a player can both rack up gold and clear enemy heroes out at the same time. Finally, let's have a look at the blue class, also known as the House of the Wise. This class features weaker heroes stat-wise, but stronger spells and abilities that allow you to maintain control of the board and slowly whittle down your opponent. Skywrath Mage is a blue hero, which has 3 attack and 6 damage. While these stats are relatively low compared to other class heroes, Skywrath's active ability gives a hero and its allied neighbors minus 2 armor this round on a 2 turn cooldown. This can be used on enemy heroes to help your units defeat them and clear the board, and it's best used when the enemy hero has allied neighbors. Skywrath Mage's signature card is Mystic Flare, a 6 mana spell which deals 12 damage evenly split amongst a hero and its allied neighbors. This card can be extremely powerful in removing multiple units from the board or one single large threat. As you can clearly see, each class has its advantages and disadvantages, and it will be up to you to decide which heroes and playstyle to use. There are plenty more heroes, signature cards, and class cards compared to what we covered in this video, but hopefully this video has given you an idea of how each class plays so you'll be ready to start deck building. Let us know in the comments below which hero you are most interested in. Which signature card or hero ability do you like the most? If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel for future content. Thanks for watching and see you guys next time. For Action Esports, this has been Real Terror.